everybody, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another homeschool video for you guys and this is my 2016-2017 homeschool year in review. I don't really think I've done anything like this on my channel as far as recapping an entire homeschool year. Kind of just a snapshot to let you know what we were doing, what was working, what we changed, and then going forward what we have planned um, for my kids. So if you don't know already, I have a seventh grader and a first grader. So my oldest just turned 13, my youngest just turned seven. And I have to say this homeschool year I think has gone the fastest of any that we've ever had. And I also think it's our best homeschool year. We did a lot more subjects together and it just seemed to go by really quickly. So I, and I'm really excited and proud of the progress that my girls have made in their subjects this year. So I guess I'll start with my oldest, my seventh grader. This year we completed round one of the IEW writing program, which is the Institute for Excellence in Writing. I did a couple videos for them. If you want to watch more of an in-depth review about those, I will link them in the description box below. We did finish the first round. We took it, um, it didn't even take us a full year to complete. And um, I do really like that writing program. It is very teacher intensive. So for that reason, I think we are going to take a little break for a while. But I do feel like her writing has improved immensely. And I feel like she has a really good now structure and building block of how to be a good writer, how to take good notes, how to summarize different source texts. So I feel like even though we've only gone through one round of it, that she really has learned a lot and it has really helped me to know kind of what to tell her when it comes to writing about a certain topic or subject that um, I think she has some really good foundational groundwork underneath her belt now that we can kind of move on a little bit and maybe we might go back to IEW later. But I really kind of want to see now that she has um, learned a few of these techniques, I want to see how she is able to naturally integrate those into her own writing style just to see. So eighth grade is going to be kind of a test of that. Um, it may not work out and we might go back to IEW and it might work out. That might be all that she really needs. But knowing that I have IEW now for my youngest when she gets older, um, I do think that at least one round of it was very beneficial and it's something that I might do again with my youngest later on down the road. Um, that being said, I'm kind of planning on creating a little bit of my own writing program for my, for my, for my seventh grader for next school year for eighth grade. I've kind of got a couple workbooks and I'm kind of pulling things together to sort of make my own writing curriculum to really, as I said, test her and see, you know, how, how her writing is going to continue to change now that she's got those foundational, you know, techniques, um, how she's going to, what, what direction she's going to go in with that, um, if that makes sense. So that's something I'm still working on putting together for next school year. We are continuing teaching textbooks with her. It's all we've ever used for her and I love it. Math is not her favorite subject. It might not ever be her favorite subject, but it's important for me to have that for her because I am terrible at math and I could not teach her math if I had to. So it really makes homeschooling an option because I don't have to worry about math. It's done for me. Um, she's still working on pre-algebra and she'll probably not finish that by the end of the school year because our end of our school year is like right now, pretty much. Um, so she is probably going to be continuing a little bit of pre-algebra into eighth grade and then she'll start algebra. Uh, we're still using Apologia for science. It's all we've ever used for her. She's still working through the anatomy book and she should be finishing it up if not soon, maybe the very beginning of next school year, um, which is kind of important because we're going to start a new topic for science next year and so she needs to finish that up. But she's in, she enjoys it and um, it's nice because not a lot of involvement uh, needed from me for her age. You know, she reads the textbook, she does the questions, she does the activities, and I just check it over when she's done. Um, for spelling, we are still using the Glencoe um, vocabulary power. It's actually grade six, um, but it's basically just a list of words, and then it throughout the week it gives them a different worksheet where they have to use the words in different contexts. And then she has a test on Friday, and we use that in combination with the website BigIQKids.com. I just enter her words in there. You know, I'll sit down in an hour and type up all her spelling words for the whole year, um, and it breaks it up by lesson. And there's games she can play online to practice the words and spelling the words, and so she likes that. And then on Friday, she has her test. Um, for history, we actually started Story of the World, which I was not planning on starting until next school year, but we really were finding we didn't have enough work anymore, um, especially for her. 
And so we went ahead and started it early. And I have to say, I am loving it. The girls really enjoy it. We're doing it together with my seventh and my first grader. And I am really enjoying it. The book is written in a conversational format, so it's not preachy. And there's not a lot of over, there's not too many dates and all this stuff that you might find in a typical history book. And it's written in like a story format. So the lessons are short, there's activities involved, there's suggested crafts and activities that we've been doing that the girls really enjoy. And it's really good for a kid who needs to keep things kind of short and not overwhelming and then has some kind of a hands-on activity involved, which is basically how both of my girls tend to do best. And even my youngest is doing really well. She's picking up on a lot of what we're reading and so I am really enjoying it and so are they. So I'm excited to continue with Story of the World next year. Um, we also started another program for her for her grammar. And instead of, her te instead of teaching her all these rules and then having her correct herself, I really want her to be able to see mistakes in anyone's writing. And so we actually, I had picked this up for eighth grade. We actually started it early as well, even though it's grade seven. It's the Evan Moore Daily Paragraph Editing um, Grade 7. I got this from Amazon and basically each day of the week she has a paragraph that she has to edit for punctuation and spelling mistakes and formatting mistakes. Um, and so that's the first thing every day. And then at the end of each week there is a writing assignment because these are all non-fiction stories which I love. It's little bits of facts and things that sneakily I'm sticking in there that are educational that so she's learning while she's also working on her writing and grammar skills. And then on Friday of each week, they have a writing assignment based on whatever that week's um, topic was about. So like for week nine, you know, they were talking about elections. And so the writing assignment is that they're supposed to write the beginning of a story that shows how characters deal with an ethical dilemma similar to the one described in student elections. And so they have some story starters. So it's really a grammar workbook with some writing thrown in. And so this is going to be part of our writing curriculum that I'm kind of creating on my own. This is part of that. It's also teaching her grammar and punctuation. So that is kind of a general recap of grade seven. We had some other subjects thrown in. We would do Bible together and things like that. But for the most part, that is her core work um, and what I'm continuing to build on for eighth grade. I'm really wanting to step up my game for eighth grade because that is her last year of middle school. And I really want to make sure that I am setting her up for all the success that she's going to need in high school. And for myself too, I want to make it, I want to organize my stuff and my things now so that I can really not have so much trouble in high school scrambling for things. So I want to maybe try to start keeping a transcript for her um, so that I'm prepared for high school and keeping a transcript for high school. I want to work a lot more on making sure that she is being challenged enough. And there's some other things too that I wanted to add in that like public speaking, that's something that we are not finding enough of. Um, so I did sign her up for a 4-H event they had where it was like a communications night where they had to write their own piece of whatever they wanted to talk about and they have to present it into this in this room of people they don't know and basically so um, that's her very first public speaking thing that she's going to be that she's done since we started homeschooling her in the middle of fourth grade so things like that where i'm able to put her in these situations maybe leadership roles in different places where she's able to really be in front of people and get used to being comfortable with that I'm planning to find some new character studies, maybe some faith-based Christian, you know, young teenage girl type books for her to read. Maybe some character studies that we're going to do together with both girls. So I'm really wanting to look into that and find some of those things. Um, and then I'm going to consult my book, The Home Learning Year by Year that I've talked about before. I'll link it below. I consult that book to see kind of what path we should be on. I don't follow it to a T, but it gives you a nice framework and a nice idea of what children their age probably are learning in school and maybe what they should be, I say should be learning at that age. I, I, again, as I said, I don't follow it to the letter, but it gives me a nice idea to kind of make sure that I'm hitting all those points. So for my youngest daughter who is in first grade, we are using and still loving All About Reading and All About Spelling. I've done quite a few videos about those programs in the past. I will link them below. I can't say enough good things about All About Reading and All About Spelling. It's the same company, but the, it's the same company. The, the reading program is amazing. The spelling program is amazing. And so we definitely plan to continue using those for her. She is making tremendous strides in her reading progress. This year, she has flourished so much. And it makes me so proud of her. It makes me proud of myself because I was scared to death to teach someone to read. And she's doing so well. And so we love those programs and are going to keep on using those. For science, she loves the curriculum that I put together for her 
um, for first grade. It's basically just a combination of a workbook that I'll link below and then the Usborne, I think it's like called the Junior Science Encyclopedia or something. It's like for early elementary years, just breaking down science concepts to a young child's level of understanding. Um, and I did, like I said, I did kind of create that on my own little science curriculum for her and she loves it. I think science is her favorite subject. She loves experiments. Um, for, for history, we're doing Story of the World together, like I said. Um, she's really retaining a lot and she's loving the activities, so it's been really fun. Um, for language arts, we're still doing First Language Lessons for the Well-Trained Mind. I love that book. It is inexpensive, it's so easy to follow, and it's great to use with tons of other supplementary worksheets and games and activities, which we do. We use a combination of first language lessons mixed with the Moffat Girls first grade language arts bundle, which I talked about before and I did a separate video on. I will link it. And then combining that also with the Moffat Girls uh, reading comprehension worksheets, which I talked about in that same video. So, I mean, that in itself is a very thorough, I feel, curriculum for a first grade for language arts. So we love that. Um, for math, we kind of changed it up a little bit. We were using Math UC and we still use some of the same concepts and we still use the blocks sometimes. But I am trying a new book called Master Books. It is a living math curriculum. So basically you have your math concepts broken down for you, but it's also combined with other things your child might need to know, like the days of the week and how plants grow from start to finish and the life cycle of a frog. and there's little projects and activities that are involved to really make a well-rounded sub, real well-rounded education, not just in math, but math is also in there as well. I did a video review about that last week. I will link it down below and we are loving it so far. So we're using that in combination with the Miss Giraffe math bundle units that we had talked about, I talked about previously. Kind of a eclectic mix for her math. So I'm not really sure going forward at this point, what we're gonna stick with for second grade. Um, teachers Teaching textbooks might be on the horizon at some point just because by the time teaching textbooks start, which is grade, starts, which is in grade three, she's going to be probably needing um, a little bit more of a, a better math teacher, to be honest, than I am. I'm not good at math and I'm not good at explaining math. And so by the time she hits third grade, <laughs> I might be getting to the point where I would need somebody to really break it down for her where she can see it visually better than I could do. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if we continue on with master books. We'll see if we continue on with teaching textbooks or if we start teaching textbooks. I'm not really sure. It is way too early in the game to be making that decision. But so far from what we've been doing, I love master books and I love how it incorporates living education with math. Um, she's going to continue to do lots of reading to me over the summer. And then, like I said, for reading next year, we're going to keep on with all about reading. Um, for her, I'm also going to be kind of putting together my own writing curriculum based on her level and then kind of where I feel I want her to be and kind of what she likes to do. I want to make writing fun. I don't want to make it seem like this strenuous, structured, rigorous thing that she hates to do. So I want to pick and choose little things here and there that she really likes to do, but that is really teaching her to be a good writer, to how to first put together a good sentence and then how to put together a good paragraph and turn that paragraph into a story. That's kind of the process. So I'm, bit, I'm getting bits and pieces right now, actually, of what we're going to be doing, and then I'll put it all together into hopefully um, a curriculum that makes sense for her. So stay tuned for progress on that. For science, the plan is to do Apologia Astronomy together with my, what will be 8th grader, and then of course she'll be a 2nd grader. That's the plan for next school year. Um, I just need to take some more time over the summer to see if it's above her head or not, if it's too much. If it is, then I will probably design my own science curriculum for her again next year like I did for 1st grade. So I don't really know yet, but the plan is to do astronomy together. Bible we're going to continue to get to do together. and then. Just overall, a really strong focus on reading, writing, and math. That is like my main core. And I know it is for everybody, but it's hard sometimes because you see all these things that you want to do for your kids and you want to do this, you want to do that. But really, I want to make sure that her strong, her foundation is as strong as it can be. And then we'll continue to add. So we didn't put much emphasis on science this year. We did do it a couple times a week, but it wasn't something that I freaked out about if we didn't get to it for one week or if math took longer than we thought and we had to skip science. You know, there's certain things I give up in order to spend more time on what I feel is the most important. So 
um, that's basically my plan for her going into second grade as well. Just kind of fixing maybe what wasn't working as well, tweaking it to her needs, tweaking it to my needs, and then putting together something for next school year that will hopefully work well for everybody. So I hope this video was helpful. I will link everything I can think to link in the description box. I've got tons of videos I know I mentioned, so I will also link my homeschooling playlist. That is where all of my homeschooling videos live. If you ever are looking and you're like, where's that video about this or that, just check out the homeschooling playlist because if it's about homeschooling, it will be there and you can see all the videos I've made in the past. But I will also try to remember to link them all individually um, just in case you would like to look at each one you know, that I mentioned specifically in this video. So I hope this was helpful. If you like this type of video, let me know so that I can know to do it again at the end of next school year. Um, and if you have any questions for me, let me know and I will try to answer them the best I can in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.